Hello guys, it's me Nedex, and today I'm here with another project. This time it's a project that I made very recently and just a quick project overall. It's called Minotaur and um, it's uh, actually quite simple so I'll go straight into it. Uh, it's a program that it, its sole purpose is to solve uh, labyrinths. Frankly, it only uses a very simple algorithm that um, I can show you. Um, right here. It um, it does not have any comments yet, but uh, I'm thinking about actually adding some comments to the code so that it's more obvious. But I've used uh, quite uh, descriptive names for all the methods and objects, so I think it's um, kind of self-explanatory. But maybe I'll put there some comments as well. And um, yeah, it's right here. Um. It works on a very simple principle. It basically progresses. Um, let me show you, um, for example, well, this one's not so good, but this one's better. Um, it starts at a certain point uh, that is marked by the green pixel. And uh, then there are targets. Those are marked by red pixels. It, uh, this is a 60 a 16 color bitmap which means that there are two colors in one byte that means that one uh, one pixel oh I just said complete bullshit well basically each pixel is four bits which means that there's a uh, one byte per two pixels why is it made that way well two reasons we only need a couple of colors so to make it simple uh, it also uses less memory, and it's uh, easier to process it, so those are the basic reasons. Now, the black pixels, which you can see here around and pretty much everywhere um, around, you, can, you cannot pass through those. Th those are walls, and the white ones, those are the ones you can pass through, so it's uh, very simple and kind of obvious. Then there's one more, more color, which is blue, but that does not happen to be here yet, because blue marks the path. The best, or the ideal path for the specified target. I'll get to that later. So what it does, it basically progresses one pixel. Uh, I'll show it on an example. It progresses one pixel. If uh, it can go there, it goes there, and it, then it does the same. Progress is one more pixel if it can go there. If it can't go there, it goes back and tries to go a different direction, and so on. So it's uh, very simple. Then it detects whether it's next to one of the targets, and if it is next to a target, then uh, it's done. So that's the thing. It's actually quite simple. It took me a while because I did a lot of fuck-ups, but uh, other than that, it's pretty, pretty easy to understand. So uh, I won't go through this too much because uh, if you if you're interested in the code, I have um, I'll put the GitHub uh, link into the description. You can download the binary here. There are these uh, examples, the those bitmaps that I've just shown you. They're right here, and the code is obviously in here. So yeah, you can you can go for that if you want. Now I'm gonna ex uh, I'm gonna show you what it uh, looks like. Well, the program itself. It's a very simple interface. I made it as simple as possible so that I don't have to explain it or anything. Um, I'll show you this one first because this one shows all the features essentially. So you can see, well it's a little fucked up but that's uh, that's really Microsoft's fault not mine. But uh, yeah I could have made like a different algorithm for the drawing but I don't really give a shit. It doesn't really matter. So when you click solve it's gonna solve each one of these, um, each one of these targets is going to be solved one by another. Obviously, they uh, they are they are assigned a number. Um, this one's going to be zero because it's in the very at the very top. If uh, two of them are at the same level, which I can't really see anywhere here, um, it goes from left to right. Well, it's pretty obvious. So yeah, let's go for it. As you can see, it uh, this basically. This is a simple setting whether you want to see the progress while it's being uh, processed or not. Doesn't really matter. You can select one or another. Uh, I could do the same without the progress, and it runs a little faster, but it's um, 
you can barely see that difference so it doesn't it doesn't really matter so as you can see here are some numbers well target zero is obviously well you can't see it anymore but you'll see it here it's the first target that I've told you about and this is the shortest way you need to pass to get to this target um, all the other targets are considered a wall when they're not being processed um, you can set it to a different setting but I think that that's the way you'd really solve it I mean usually the targets are in a place where you don't really have to go otherwise anyway so it shouldn't really matter um, now let me explain to you what these um, numbers mean they're really simple to understand but uh, someone might not really see it that's so it's tar target and the idea of this target moves that means how many moves you have to make to get to the target uh, it's it excludes the move you need to make here and here it only counts well basically it's the number of blue pixels to make it very simple and time is the is the number of milliseconds it took to calculate the calculate this whole thing oh shit no 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 I didn't I didn't mean to do that that was a misclick fuck never mind um so you can see that this one took 56 milliseconds, this one is a little longer, so it took 106 milliseconds. This one, uh, this one cannot be solved, because as you can see, you cannot get here from anywhere. So this one took a three and a half second, and it has not been processed, so this is the output. When it's not possible to get from the start to the target, it simply doesn't have any path. But it's also shown as a bitmap, so that you can see that that target does not have any path so those are of course very time-consuming because there's no other way you have to process it, the whole thing uh, this one's very simple you can see that it took only one millisecond yeah so that's about it I can I don't have to go through the rest of them they're all the same now if I I can actually close this um, yeah let me show you the second one First, without the progress, so you can see what happens when you don't have the progress, and then I'll put on the progress again. So you can see that you cannot really see anything. Well, that's why there's the display progress option, so that you can see the progress while it's being done. Uh, this is a specific scenario, and um, it's really here to show you, well, this bitmap, the, the test one, um, it's only here to explain the problem with... Uh, with too wide path. When the when the path is too wide, let me show you. When there's too many of the of these white pixels next to each other, like this, there's far too many options you can go to get to the towards the target. You can you can make too many moves here. And that makes the program run extremely slow and it's very difficult to process. So when designing those labyrinths for the program, you should avoid such situations because right here there there are simply too many combinations. I'll show you right now. Um, solve. Actually, that did not work too well. Um, yeah, well, I know why, but uh, you cannot solve the same bitmap twice because it's being replaced by the final by the final bitmap, so yeah, you can't really do that, you have to reload it much like this so this is what it looks like, this is the problem, as you can see it's like there, there. you can see the combinations right here it's it's not a major problem, but you, you should really consider it when designing those labyrinths because it could be a major problem and it it's really time consuming, when you have a long a long path that is like three pixels wide or something even more it truly is a problem. As you can see, with the display progress turned on, it took 15 seconds, but that could just as well be a coincidence. Yeah, but it took longer time. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little slower, but it should not really make... Like, it's not it's not 50 times slower. It could be like 2 times slower, maybe maybe even 5 times slower, yeah, but it's, it's not going to be like a really huge difference. Unless you make some really complicated something really complicated that runs for hours then it could be a little inconvenient but otherwise it shouldn't really matter too much so yeah that's about it um that's all i wanted to show you so 
here's the um, here's the github i'm gonna put the link in the description as i said and uh yeah you can download all of these here they're licensed under the mit license which means that you can use them as much as you want really you can use them for your own project you can use the code uh, but uh you have to redistribute your code under the mit license as well and uh, yeah well that's everything uh thanks for watching guys and uh, i hope you maybe maybe you've seen something uh that interests you or uh yeah maybe you've learned something so uh thanks for watching and i'll see you next time